I'm Alex. I'm Laura. And today we're going to be talking about chicken was in your pantry. Mm-hmm. Or your spice rack, whatever you call it. Because I didn't have a pantry before I moved to Texas. We do not have them in California for the most part. I had half of, like, a shelf in a cupboard. Like, itty bitty. But this is really good for not only witching on the cheek, but also witching from the closet. And I would also say, like, uh, kitchen witchery. Mm-hmm, for sure. Especially if you have any, and you don't have to be good at cooking, mm-hmm. honestly. Because um, my boyfriend and I just really started grilling our own, he, he does a wonderful job grilling steaks. Have you even tried his steak yet? No, but I've had his chicken. Yeah. And Mm. chicken, for all its simplicity, he makes really good chicken. And literally all I do is he oils it up and I just dump some garlic and some other seasoning and I just go... There's no measuring nothing. It's just... (laughs) And, you know, you just kind of figure out how much seasoning you like to your tastes. Mm -hmm. But, so today, um, this one is literally some common herbs to maybe less common herbs. And... I basically just went into my pantry and I was like, what's in here? And we're just going to talk about a few of them, maybe some background a little bit, what they're good for, and just go from there. Mm -hmm. So the first one I pulled out and I happen to really, really, really enjoy is garlic. Mm. So I have some visuals. So garlic, when it's dry, kind of looks a little sandy. It's not very exciting looking. Um... Fresh garlic is best garlic, but some people don't like the taste of how strong fresh garlic yeah. is. And you have to have a mincer. There's more work to fresh garlic, but it's a lot better tasting and it has more benefits. But we're not worried about that today. Dry garlic is, again, very affordable, very easy to find in smaller quantities. And it's in just about everybody's cabinet. Mm-hmm. Even if it's garlic salt, like there's garlic in there, and then you have the benefits of the salt, which we'll get into. Well, I actually think combining, uh, like having garlic with salt is a really good combination if you're needing to put out some just, um, like initial protection, Mm -hmm. and you can't really find a lot else, because I always felt that garlic was a very protection-oriented herb. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, everybody kind of has... Like cleansing, purification, um, and protection with salt as well. So putting them together, I think, would be a really. Mm-hmm. Now that's we're gonna get into it a little later, but that's really why people associate vampires being repelled with garlic because vampires originally were seen more like, yeah, Walking Dead in an essence, but really just negative spirits. So the essence was you're repelling negativity at the end of the day. Well, yeah, that, and I think gar- garlic was originally considered um, holy. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. the, the herb itself was considered holy, so that's another reason why um, repelling vampires and all that mess. Mm-hmm. Which is funny, though, because I was doing, I did research for this video because I didn't want to just be like, garlic, it's good, moving on. I wanted to give a little more info. <laughs> um, they do repel vampires, but they are also good for psychic vampires. Which are actually a thing. They're actually a thing. It's not just like some weird type Oh, of you mean like somebody that like saps you, mm-hmm. saps you dry? Like, yeah, literally. It's, that's the name for people that just drain your energy. They're literally called psychic vampires. There you go. So garlic is a repellent for those type of vampires too. Just go um, drain garlic on people. Mm-hmm. Go on. So go on. it was thought to protect from the evil eye as well. So more about protection, repelling evil things. Mm-hmm. Um... You've probably seen a lot of garlic wreaths, kind of like a strand mm-hmm. of garlic, especially in like movies. Like I know they show in Dracula, the oh, Bram Stoker yeah. '90s version. They put like a ton of garlic in this one girl's room because they realize what's happening and they're trying to repel the evil from her, which was the vampirism taking over. Didn't work, but that's another story. Yeah. Um, I've also seen it put in like spell bottles and talismans. Mm-hmm. And I've also seen people. Like pour like the ground garlic into a like a little cup or chalice, and then if there's something that they're wanting to um, lay a protection spell on or a cleansing spell, they will stick it in the garlic and leave it there overnight. Yeah, true. So. Um, be careful when you're doing that though, because the oil, especially if it's a fresh garlic, could do something. That's like why I was garlic. saying like powdered garlic. Yeah. So yeah, not not I don't I wouldn't do it so much with the fresh stuff unless you're just like 
real quick and it's not something that's going to eat at it. Mm -hmm. Because for fresh garlic, they used to wipe it on blades for kind of um, almost sanctifying blades for rituals. And I think they used to do that for some weaponry too. Kind of to give it a little extra huzzah when you go to stab (laughs) someone. Um, So everything else is just going to be a little fun kind of fat tidbits that I just found in my research. I stab at thee with garlic. <laughs> hey, man, if it works, it works. <laughs> um, they used to be in bridal bouquets. Really? Yeah. Um, they used to be made of garlic and dill. Oh. Because brides, in a, especially in a lot of old, uh, not communities, but old, like wives' tales, old kind of superstitions was brides were thought to, cold feet used to, Basically, why people thought you got cold feet was because evil spirits were trying to get you. Oh. Because um, yeah. of all the nerves and everything. People thought nerves came from bad spirits. They didn't think, you know, your brain or your heart had anything to do with it. Okay, um, I, I, I get it. And they thought that the bride needed extra protection, basically. So, you know, there's some cultures where they try to connect the bride and do all mm-hmm. kinds of stuff. This was basically to shield her from negativity on her special day. Cool. Um, the one I thought was funny was ancient Egyptians were all about their garlic, which yeah. I never really associated that culture with garlic. I don't know why. Um, but they, you know how garlic kind of gives you smelly breath? Yeah. Especially fresh garlic, again. But they thought that if they ate a whole bunch before traveling at night, it would repel um, demonic energies and evil energies because they're like, it'll keep them away if I talk at them. <laughs> Basically, they thought... That it was so pungent <laughs> that it would repel the evil from them. See, that's the thing. If I just knew that I had really crappy people coming over and I just <laughs> didn't know. Really? <laughs> well, I mean, if you have negative people that you know are coming into your house and you're going to have to sit with them and eat with them, just make you some, like, pungent, like, really good garlic mashed potatoes or something. It's like, I ward thee against evil, you know, just... Give them a little kick at the door almost. There you go. Um... So that was, I thought that was funny, but then the Greeks and the Romans thought it was good for enhancing their athleticism. Oh, cool. So that was kind of one of the first steroid usage type things at the Olympics. Oh, okay. Was they dose with garlic. <laughs> Isn't uh, garlic also uh, sacred to some deities? Mm-hmm. The one that I found, um, ironically, was, and ironically, because that's my deity at the moment, I'm still kind of doing my own little... Uh, my journey um, is Hecate from oh, okay. Greek mythology. So, or that's where her mythology comes from. They think she might have originally been Egyptian, actually. Really? Because they think she was not Sekhmet, but one of the other lady oh, deities. Oh, but like brought in. Mm-hmm. Kind of. Because there's no beginning to where Hecate was in Greek mythology. Oh. So she just showed up one day, basically. She doesn't have an origin story. She has multiple. Because there wasn't one definitive one. Because no one was sure. She kind of just started showing up in writings. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Like I said, some people think she came before Zeus. Some people think Zeus is her dad. Some people think she's not quite a titan, but she was somewhere between titan and god. Um, Some people think Nyx is one of her parents, which is just the the embodiment of night. Some other people think, um, I forget what their name is, but the embodiment of the stars is another parent, so... I can see that. There's all kind of parentage, or some people think she doesn't have parents at all. Um, so there's just a lot, and we're probably going to get into that in another video, because there's a lot more just stuff to her. Um, so athletic prowess, they used it before battles as well, kind of to give yeah. me more oomph too. And then the other thing that I found that I especially associated with Hecate was they would hang garlic braids in midwife rooms. Oh, okay. When they were helping with the delivery of children. So that was also to kind of keep the health in the room because people thought it would also bring health to you. Basically repel the evil, keep the good. Right. And then, again, repel the bad. So so really, it's it's good for protection and it's really good for health, endurance, stamina. Um, mm-hmm. And it does have a lot of health benefits. We're not going to try and talk too much about those, though, yeah. because we are not doctors. <laughs> no. um, I'm going to leave links down below where I found some of this info, and some of that will talk about health stuff, but even they have disclaimers, you know, talk to your doctor. 
Um, cause garlic sometimes is not good for you, but sometimes it is very good for you. But then food ideas, you can put garlic in a lot of things like you mentioned mashed potatoes mm -hmm. or if anyone likes garlic bread, which is delicious. Um, so a lot of Italian food, a lot of food in general has garlic in it. So. Yeah. I use it for a lot of seasonings if I'm like breading chicken and to make tenders or something. Mm -hmm. But the kitchen witchery is kind of more your thing. I don't really use a lot of herbs in the kitchen for magical purposes. Mm -hmm. I just, I, when I cook, I cook. So, yeah. So, I mean, that's what I normally, that's what I mostly do for my stuff as well, honestly. But, you know, if you wanted to give yourself a boost, you know, if you needed some protection or we're going to get into other herbs, if you need something else that you can do it with intent mm -hmm. instead of just <laughs> namby pambying it like I do. <laughs> Um, the next one is oregano. So this one's a little more Italian-esque in nature. Looks like, like a leafy kind of thing. A lot of herbs kind of look leafy though. Um, so I don't have a lot of information about these. It's more like a, what they're good for kind of thing. Real quick run through. It is for... It's a happy herb, so it's good for happiness, tranquility, it's good for health, luck. It's a green herb, so any kind of, mm -hmm. anything you associate with the color green, which is yeah. typically prosperity, money, luck, stuff like that. Yeah. I've if you have different associations, use it for that. But. Yeah, I've seen it used a lot for, for prosperity and uh, money, money spells. And then the other thing I read about it was it's good for existing love. Oh. So... You know, if that. yeah, if you're already yeah, because it brings again joy, tranquility, peace, yeah. harmony. So you know, if you're just looking to zhuzh up your marriage or zhuzh up a long-term relationship, a little oregano and that chicken <laughs> might you know put a little spice in your life. <laughs> anyway, um, on your pillow. Yeah, um, a lot of these had uh, it said to put under pillows or under beds for good dreams or for bringing that into if you're looking to bring something into the bedroom you put it in the bedroom um i've also seen oregano used for like um like grieving or something like that for like loss mm. to like help help with dealing oh, with yeah, yeah, yeah. loss yeah um so and i did read about that i thought that was one of my other herbs um i there was reading where you can Plant it or put it over a grave um, if it's just something you're having a hard time with. Um, again, ingesting it and thinking about the person you're trying to get over. So it can be grief with actual loss, someone passing away, or loss of that person's no longer in your life. Oh, so okay. if you have a breakup or a falling out with a friend or something where you don't wish them ill will, but you know you just kind of drifted apart or whatever and you're trying to really put the kibosh on it, like, you know it's better for everyone if there's no further contact, if there's just, they go their way, you go your way, you know, you're just trying to give it a good, clean break, oregano is one of those things they say that was good for. Yeah, and I love the fact that you don't just have to put these things in food in order for them to be useful. Like, mm -hmm. they can go in spell bottles, you can make oils out of them um, for anointing, you can put the, you know... Use them to make char charm bags and talismans. And mm -hmm. I've seen people rub it into um, candle, like the figure candles. If you're mm -hmm. trying to get to represent somebody, mm -hmm. you can for sure you can rub it into the candle um, to represent like parting with that person. Yep, definitely true. So the cooking is more for being on the sly. Yeah, I would say so. If you're if you're not able to do candles, if you're not able to do have bottles and. Mm -hmm. You know, because oregano is something else you can sprinkle around your house. Yes. But if, you know, it's not something that's bad for pets. No. I don't think. I don't um, think so. And, but yeah, if you're, if you're not in a spot where you can just sprinkle herbs around your house or you can't have spell bottles lying around, mm -hmm. putting it in chicken or pasta, because oregano is really good in pasta sauce. It's, mm. It normally comes, like, if you buy pre-made, like, mm -hmm. um, what's one of them brands? Prego or whatever oh, they're yeah. called. yeah. Um, nine out of ten times, it'll already have oregano in it because it's the, what kind of gives tomato sauce a bitter flavor at the end of it. That's oregano. Um, so that's kind of all that I have about oregano. The only last little bit was it's also good for 
nerves. Like if you're really, really, really nervous, it can oh. help with calming that down a little bit. That makes sense considering um, you had mentioned a while ago that it was good for like tranquility and stuff. So I mm-hmm. can real, I can see that being good for calming a nervous, mm-hmm. a nervousness. So, yep. Um, next one, um, because they've already mentioned this in, in our, we mentioned it in our last, uh, tips and tricks kind of video was turmeric because I really enjoy turmeric and it's in one of my teas and I've had it in, my mom actually makes a really good salmon Ooh. with turmeric and it literally turns the salmon like highlighter yellow almost. So Everything that you put in yeah, so turns highlighter it's yellow. It's a little interesting. Well. You know, the other day, Jose and I made chicken, and it went like a like almost a mustard yellow. Mm-hmm. It didn't quite go bright. So sometimes it'll go really bright, sometimes it'll go a little darker. Because it is a darker yellow, originally. Um, and turmeric's really, it's, again, one of those things that's really good for you health-wise, but mm-hmm. not getting into that. It also makes a really good dye for those of you that like dyeing um, fabric, clothes, wool. I'm a, I'm a knitter and a spinner, so dyeing just kind of... Maybe, maybe you'll bring your, we'll film you do some spinning because, you know, that that's very, like, a old-timey kind of... I don't know. Like, my spinning, when I spin, I feel very close to, um, like, spider, spider energy, creating, you know, bringing things together. Hey, hey our channel is weaving, man. So. I know, right? <laughs> so that might make sense. Um, so what to mix it for is... Banishing and protection again. So a lot of this is going to have kind of a theme almost of it to banish and protect stuff because a lot of herbs are just very strong in that sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I really love turmeric. I like it as a tea. Like I, I think I mentioned this in a prior video, but I was actually drinking a a blend of tea by, what was it? Tazo, Tazo, yeah, whatever it's called. T-A-Z-O, but. and it's, it's called Turmeric Bliss. Oh my goodness, it's so good. But I my most of my witching on the sly stuff is going to be in teas, which actually we're hoping to put out a tea magic video like here here soon. really soon. Mm-hmm. But that's a really good one to to make tea with. One of the cool things I did read about this, so I don't know where you would get a rhizome of turmeric. I don't know if they sell them um, whole like at maybe food markets or. Mm. You know, I don't know if that's something you might be able to find at maybe an Indian market because they do work with a lot of turmeric. I'm not mm. sure. I don't know where to get them necessarily. I don't know what the price of turmeric is. Yeah. Especially like an actual, like a root of turmeric. I'm not sure. Right. But I was reading that uh, they will take a rhizome bead about a grape size. So maybe about like that big, right? I think it's about a grape. And then they'll put it on a cord and they'll tie it around as a necklace or an armband. And it's a talisman to ward off evil. Oh. So I was like, that's kind of cool, because it, it, in my head it looks kind of like those little wooden beads that are used in like other mm-hmm. traditions for basically the same thing of protection and warding off evil. It reminds me of making the garlic wreath. Yeah. So again, a lot of these kind of have that going on for them. Um, and then that was kind of all I really had, because it was, again, I read a lot of stuff and it was mostly like, it helps banish, it helps protect, it helps banish, it helps protect. So I was like, okay. Um, and that, like we said, is good on chickens, fishes, rices. Um, mm-hmm. It's what's found in, if not all, but most curries. Yeah. So, you know, which curry is delicious. It is. Um, the next one was cinnamon, which mm. most people will know what cinnamon looks like. Yeah. Um, either in stick form or the plain old powder form. This is, you know, plain old ground cinnamon. And that is good for a one of the things it's really good for romance actually. Mm-hmm. I wrote that down. Um, but if you have a stick or if it's in an incense and you burn it, mm. it's really good for sanctifying an area mm-hmm. or an object. So it's just again the whole fire thing. And cinnamon is a fi- of, of a fire element because it's a, it's a spicy spice. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I've ar- I've also seen cinnamon in like prosperity and money spells too. Like it goes really well if you're making specifically a money or a prosperity incense with like um, cloves and other things like that. So it adds a little extra poom mm-hmm. to it. So yeah, so it's so there's a blend that I read about that was kind of neat. Was um, cinnamon, cloves, cardamom, 
nutmeg and ginger. So mm-hmm. that's a lot of stuff, but you know, if you have a couple of those, you might already have most of them. Yeah. Um, and then I was reading about, and this is something good to note, is if you're steeping it in an oil, be very careful. Cinnamon is an irritant. Oh, yeah. So if you go to rub it on yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or you go to, like, touch it with your hands or bare skin, just be careful. It yeah. is not highly recommended for sensitive skin, especially. Because um, I was reading about how people like to, um... Because it's good for romance. Mm-hmm. So people were talking about how, like, um... You can just kind of dab it on for, like, a date or something. Just kind of give you a little spicy essence. I know. Essence. You need to but, have a little kick to the night. But yeah, but so you want to be careful. You don't want to have like a rash or something <laughs> wherever you put it. Um, I've used cinnamon. Like I like using cinnamon sticks. Um, I because I like I mentioned before, I do a lot of tea magic. I like using it as a stir mm. um, when I'm trying to you know uh, incur a little bit of a little heat to the situation or something like that, or trying to give myself a, a spark. Um, I use it in combination with um, some of my creativity tea stuff okay to to give myself a little bit of like that fire that uh wand energy Mm. in tarot gotcha um but it's also uh i've I've used a cinnamon stick for a wand i'm not a wand person like you have a couple of wands for different uses i'm really not that much of a wand person but i i do like using cinnamon sticks as a fire wand if you specifically are doing a spell and you would like to bring an element of fire into it Using a cinnamon stick as a fire wand may may really help you direct some of those energies into what you're doing. Yeah. No, I actually got my, uh, Christina gave me a bag of cinnamon. Oh! When she was moving, she had, like, bags of all those herbs around Okay, her. that, that does not surprise me at all. She's a very fiery person, Christina. <laughs> but she had, like, a bag of cinnamon, and she had a bag of some other Mexican herbs and stuff, and, mm-hmm. and she, I'm like, those are mine, because you don't want them, she don't want them anymore. Um... But I was laughing because the only time I've ever actually used cinnamon sticks was when I made a love statue. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. So. And, mm-hmm. uh, not saying it worked, but it worked. <laughs> you didn't. I wasn't being specific. But okay. So, yeah, so, um, you want to be specific if you're ever doing any kind of statue in general, especially if you're involving... Another energy. So, mine was specific but general. Like, it was, like, what I wanted in a partner, not who I wanted as a partner. Okay. Because I feel like if you put too much expectation on it, you're, you're not going to get no. it. Um, but, yeah, I had I had learned things from past relationships, and I was like, I want this in a partner. I don't want this. But that's another video. Anyway. Um, it's always another video. We're sorry. <laughs> These videos would be way too long if everything was in one video. I know, we'd be here for five hours. Pretty much. Um, oh, what cinnamon's found in normally or things you can just throw it in? Um, most pastries, like cinnamon buns, cinnamon rolls, pumpkin pie. A lot of pies around November, actually. Um, apple I like, pie. <laughs> I like combining it or sprinkling it on a... Apples and baking them in the oven. Mm, those that, were, that, that was good. Yeah, but that's that's one of the very few like kitchen witchery things I would probably do because I actually do really like apples. And apples are romance too. Apples are romance too. They are um, health, prosperity, sexuality, femininity, you know, knowledge. Does it, it, your lady do apples? Yes, <laughs> yes. In some some instances, apples are are part part of her stuff. Mm, I wonder. <laughs> uh-huh, yeah. Um, and the other thing that, um, especially in Mexican traditions, I'm sure other traditions have rice pudding, but in Mexican tradition, they still normally make their rice pudding by scratch. Like, we don't typically buy it. And I remember the first time I ever ate it, I was confused because they would leave just whole cinnamon sticks in there. And I think one time I bit one. <laughs> Ooh. That wasn't very pleasant. Oh. <laughs> um, I was just like, did I just eat wood? <laughs> I was just like, yes, you did. You ate bark. It wasn't pleasant, but it gives it really good flavor. So if you it do does. desserts or steep bread pudding, I'm sure it has cinnamon in it. Oh, too. yeah. So a lot of desserts. I'm sure there's savory stuff, but mm-hmm. I typically associate cinnamon with sweet stuff. 
Next one is... I wonder if that's also a reason why it's really good for some love spells. Not just for passion, yeah, for but for love itself. Sweetening it up. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Spicy sweet. Um, next one is paprika. This one's another weird one, but it reminded me of something really cute and derpy. Um, actually, no, it's not. Okay. Oh, here it is. Um, you can tell my family doesn't really use it a lot because it is a full jar. <laughs> um, like, there's barely any missing. Like, you can see, like... <laughs> It's full. Anyway, oh, but I was remembering that um, if anyone watched Blue's Clues in the oh. 90s, Paprika was the little baby from Mr. Uh, Mr. Salt and Mrs. Pepper. Their baby was Paprika. And apparently they had another baby, which I don't remember, which was Cinnamon. They had a baby Cinnamon who was oh. a little baby boy because Paprika was a little girl. That's adorable. Yeah, so you've heard the word paprika if you ever saw Blue's Clues in the 90s. <laughs> but, yeah, I was thinking about that and I was like, alrighty, dork. <laughs> Moving on. Um, so paprika is, I mean, it's not super, super spicy. This is another one of those that's associated with uh, fire signs, right? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Like, it's associated with fire, I think Mars. Don't work too hard. Oh, yeah. So it's a spice, but it's not... It's more of a heat spice and a whoo hot spicy spice. Um, so it gives you a more um, depth of flavor. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so it is spice though, so it's going to be related to like sun energy, fire energy. Um, it's red in color, so it's more spice. So it's associated um, with like Mars and Aries, right? Mm -hmm. And then I was reading that it's also associated with Scorpio. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Which is <laughs> funny because Scorpio is a water sign, but a, a pretty fiery water sign, I guess, yeah. would be a good way to, to say. Even though Scorpio is deep water, which would be cold, not hot, but I don't know. <laughs> I find that a lot of that gets like combined or like the wires get crossed because if something is too cold, it feels like it's burning you. Yeah, I can see that too. Um, and you know, if something's too hot, it can almost feel like it's it's almost cold for a second too, and then it's just melting. Um, but so this one more than some other spices are good for kind of kicking somebody in the rear or getting somebody out of here or whatever. Right. This one's more as a as a booster. Oh. Okay. So on top of having its own stuff for like energy and. Um, it's actually a romance herb too. You can kind of put it in some of your more romancy type stuff. I can see that. Um, but on its own, like, you can, on its own, it's, like I said, romance, fidelity, stuff, but if you need to boost something you already have, paprika is a good, just kind of like a, like an oomph. So it could be, like, if you're trying to get rid of somebody and you already got, like, a sachet or a bag or a bottle of, you know, go away or get lost or whatever you're mi making, you can just add a little kick of paprika and that will kind of boost it out, boost it up, you know? Or, you know, if you're looking to bring something into your life, prosperity, something good, that'll also kind of give it a boost. Um, just, I guess make sure with paprika, if you're going to work with that, to really set your intention as you're adding it. Since it's got some bringing in, but it's also got some going away. With, mm -hmm. with specific herbs that have that kind of dual, duality to them, where it can be used to banish or to bring in. Um, just make sure that you set your intention with it as you're putting into mm -hmm. whatever you use. Especially, it especially if you're just adding it in, though, because I feel like you're gonna already have the setup for, like I said, if it's something more negative of getting mm -hmm. rid of something. Most of your other stuff is probably gonna be associated with getting rid of something. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for sure, intention's always important. Yes. Um. But yeah. So versus like if you have a lot of cinnamon and honey and some good stuff, and you're looking for romance, and you add the paprika. It's definitely more of a happy love boost than if you're trying to give someone the heap home. Um, <laughs> kick out the door. <laughs> um, next one was... Bay leaves, I think. Oh, yeah, we didn't talk about what to put paprika in. And again, chicken, rice, good for most stuff. Next one is bay leaves. So I've got a couple actual stories for that one, but let's pull it out first. So you can get it... In little jars, I'm actually gonna pull one out because I'm gonna show y'all some stuff. So it looks like something that just blew in into your garage, or you just picked it off a bush because it looks like any old leaf, honestly. 
And apparently it smells stronger when it's dry than when it's fresh. Really? I was reading a whole article because someone was like, why do we put this in stuff? Because you don't eat this. You when you put this in food, you steep it almost. Yeah. I so you put it in it rice. Out. Like yeah, you 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 know you take it out. You don't go chewing on it because it's basically like chewing, um, like hay or something. Like it doesn't fall apart in our mouths. Like we don't have any. Like it's very tough and kind of gross. Um, so what these are good for is I've seen them used for like making granting wishes. Like, writing a bay leaf and burning it to set, mm-hmm. uh, send a wish out. I've also seen um, bay leaves in particular. I I associate with, like, um, prophecy, but also <laughs> with, um, like, dreaming, like, dream working. Mm-hmm. What? I have, like, a big old story about that. Oh, Lord. Um, so, okay. ancient Greece is where we're going back for all this. So... These look kind of familiar because if anyone's seen the symbol, especially for like, if you ever go to like Vegas and you see Caesar's Palace and the wreath, mm-hmm. those are bay leaves. Really? The mm-hmm. laurels are bay leaves? Mm-hmm. Literally, yeah. So, um, that's what bay I'm leaves are. So I forgot that because I think we covered that in my Roman Civ class for history. Yeah, like I think somewhere in the back of my mind I knew, but I also forgot. Yeah. But yeah, because um, this is what people were crowned with when they won Olympics. And I think to this day, on the medal, they have, I think, an embossed image of the original crown, because you don't get crowned with Oh, them, I wonder if it's associated with Nike. Goddess of Victory? It's actually associated with Apollo. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, is it the, the, the lady in the tree and the... A little bit, but okay. yeah. I, I'm, um, I'm getting ahead of everything. Yeah, but that's also where we got the name, the word baccalaureate. Really? Because... Laurel. Oh, okay, yeah, that's yeah. That. And to Fair. rest on one's laurels. I've heard that. Yeah, so I don't know why we don't call it the laurel then. We call it the bay leaf. <laughs> but hey, um, but yeah, so I'm gonna flip the page. I have a lot of notes. <laughs> um, yeah, this is, this is all be- <laughs> Um, so it's good. It was good for it. The other funny story was that a lot of people, especially in ancient Greece, thought it would protect you from being struck by lightning. That's interesting. Because lightning came from the gods, especially Zeus, so people were worried about incurring wrath, so they would be like, protect me. Boop. Don't know if it worked. I don't think so. (laughs) I'm surprised they didn't wear or have something more sacred to Zeus then, rather than having something that's more um, important to Apollo. So, it is very important to Apollo because of that story. The, um, he... <laughs> a lot of dudes in ancient Gr- Greek history were interesting with ladies. Um, he was really into a... What were they called? Nymph? Yeah, he was really into a nymph, and nymphs were kind of like nature spirits, to put it easily. And she wanted nothing to do with him, and she was... To protect her, she was turned into a laurel bush tree. So bush he, tree thing? Yeah, so he couldn't get with her, basically. There's <laughs> so a lot of stories There's like a lot of stories about nymphs especially getting turned into things. Poor girls. <laughs> um, but laurels were also favored by Zeus. Because okay. in a lot of artwork and a lot of depictions, he is wearing... Oh, okay. That's why it was the crown of the Olympics, because a lot of... People believe that if you won the Olympics, you were favored by the gods. Okay. Um, real quick, y'all that are actually follow the the Greek pantheon, um, or if y'all are followers of Nike, I am actually curious to know, since she's so associated with victory, and so are laurels, is there any connection there? You know, comment comment below. I'm, I'm interested to, to hear more about that, if any of y'all know anything about it. Yeah, the only thing I would think is maybe Nike was later and so Apollo had more either that or she I don't know she could have given them no idea so oh, yeah no, that I'm, would I'm curious be... that's why I was like co- comment below yeah. if y'all know anything I'm, I'm curious to know more about that mm-hmm. and then I've only read it in a couple places so I wasn't 100% sure but they also associated it with oh Saradwin yeah I can never say that name I feel terrible but I didn't read it in a lot of places, so I'm not 100-100% sure, but it was mentioned in a couple, so I was like, yeah, it's kind of cool. I don't know, I don't really I don't follow. do a lot of Greek, uh, uh, I don't do a lot of Celtic stuff, so. I only know passingly of Saradwin. I really don't, 
I don't dabble with, with other deities, really. I don't especially work with other deities within the Celt Celtic pantheon at this point because I'm still exploring my relationship mm -hmm. with my lady, and she's a, she can be a little uh, mine. Yeah, I, I can see that. Um, so, yeah. I, I respect her wishes, and I, I'm not going looking for any anybody else to work with. I'm happy where you're at right now, mm -hmm. for sure. Unless so. in the future it she brings them in or she lets me know, hey, go do this other thing or, you know, hey, other deity, fix this. I'll come <laughs> back for her. But, um, yeah, so, again, people that are into this, but I'm going to take this out again because I'm just going to laugh real, real quick. Um, Because you had said psychic dreams. Yeah. And well, that's a small one. So they come in different sizes because they're leaves. Um, the Oracle of Delphi. Oh, yeah was a really famous oracle of ancient Greece. Yeah. You would go to them and they would predict your future, basically. And it was one of Apollo's temples. And basically, they would chew a bunch of these and inhale the smoke. Is that the smoke that they were? I thought it was, um... Ah, my salt! <laughs> don't spill the salt, Alex. It's closed, it's closed. Okay. Um, I don't know. I thought they were inhaling some other kind of vapors. Um, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if there was other herb mixtures, but they were saying that this specifically was what they did at oh. Delphi. Or Del Delphi? Delphi? One of the two. Um, but yeah, I was just laughing because I was like, man, because these are, I wouldn't want to choose this, but hey, if it made me see the future, maybe. Um, they, okay, anyway, so they also, <laughs> so that was, again, a really famous <laughs> Greek kind of thing. They thought it also helped banish illness, again, kind of like the garlic. This would be in wreath kind of shape, so they would hang it in rooms. They would have it all over the place, kind of just... Again, health back then especially was associated with negative beings, negative energies, negative spirits, demonic spirits, what have you. It wasn't something you caught in like a natural way. It was more like a, something was haunting you almost, and it just made you ill. Um, but yeah, so another good thing it's really good for, especially for burning, is cleansing. Oh, sorry. Um, so, two things though. I was taught one of them by a really good friend. Oh, okay. Um, and then the other one I read about. So I had to ask him actually for the details on it. So, the good one first, and then the more... Well, they're both good. The other one is bad. So you would take a bay leaf and you put one in your right shoe before you like as you go out and about because it's supposed to boost your confidence kind of like the whole god sings like athleticism it's kind of just to give you a little extra pickup in your life but you can put a bay leaf in your left shoe as you go leaving and then when you get back home you want to burn it because it's supposed to absorb all the negativity oh and then you don't want to bring it in your house right um so the only thing I would suggest if you can't be burning stuff is maybe you don't carry a lighter or whatever with you is destroy it with some other means like carry scissors or rip it up or something and then just fling it, it to the wing. fling it far, far away. But yeah, one of one of my friends, Eric, actually, hmm. suggested that when I was having some issues because I just, I didn't know what else to do. He was just like, hey, try some of this stuff. And that one was pretty nice and it's really, like, it's, it's easy to hide because you just, you can tuck it right under your sock or if you think you'll feel it you can tuck it under the uh insert of your mm -hmm. shoe so just it's got to be in your shoe and that's somewhere. really pretty discreet i would say mm -hmm. no one's gonna go looking around in your shoes i would hope yeah i would hope <laughs> that'd be kind of weird like let me see your shoe um and then again as far as what to put this in um spell bags satchel bags in your shoes um food wise rices soups stews apparently you can put these in your chilies I don't eat chili, um, though. Um, I've seen people put them... See, this just makes me wish I cooked more. Um, I've seen people put them in um, tomato sauces. Specifically, oh. pasta sauces. And okay. steeping it. Yeah, because um, I was reading a, a really long article, actually, because this lady was just like, does bay, do bay leaves do anything, or do we just buy them because old habits die hard? And it basically gives things a rounded flavor. It's very subtle, and you wouldn't really pick up on just bay leaf on its own. Like, you will pick it up if you're just cooking with it and, like, something like... She cooked it in plain rice. Um, 
But it, when you're adding it with a bunch of other stuff, you're not going to distinctly taste leaf. You're going to taste something a lot more subtle. Oh. So yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a subtle herb. All right, and then the big stuff, the salt and the pepper. Right. So I'm pretty sure everyone knows what the heck salt looks like, but... So this is sea salt, and it comes in its own little grinder, which I think is pretty neat because I, I don't know. I've always just liked the grinder stuff versus the, the shaker stuff because it just lets you uh, get a more almost precise amount. And then I like sea salt over other salts because it just tastes better, in my opinion. Also, um, if you're not using sea salt for your magics, be careful because I was reading that iodized salt can interact badly with some other ingredients. Oh. Um, so yeah, we're not going to talk a whole lot about other salts, unfortunately. I didn't find a lot of stuff except for this. And we're going to talk about Himalayan salt, which I don't have, unfortunately, right now. But, so sea salt is 100% recommended over any other kind of salt. And then, let me show that too. Pepper. These are peppercorns that you would stick in a grinder. Or, my mom likes putting them whole in soups. Oh. Um, you're just going to be careful because you might bite in the one. Oh, and no. then, <laughs> um, I got used to it, honestly, so I don't mind it anymore. But um, it really surprised my boyfriend the other day. Poor man. <laughs> he, really, he can't handle anything spicy. He bit into it and he was just like... <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Or if I can feel it, I'll just swallow it. It's good for you. Okay. Um, so, salt. Salt is super witchy. Um, it is good for purity. It is good for... I didn't really relate it to that, but it makes sense connecting with moon and or ocean energies, especially if it's a sea salt. Mm -hmm. um, I never associated with the moon, but I mean, I, I guess it makes sense because the moon is related to the ocean in some senses. So Connected by association? Basically. Um, and most people have salt, so this is like a really easy one to just have lying around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, again, good for spiritual protections, especially if anyone's seeing Supernatural. <laughs> salt! Salt everywhere! Circles, windowsills. I'm sure they put it in other places. Oh, yeah. Oh. Hey, they packed their bullets with it. Oh, yeah. That's right. Shotgun so. shells full of rock salt. There you go. Uh, I don't know if I'd recommend that one, but... <laughs> well, maybe not to shoot people. <laughs> um... Mm. They did, they did do that in Kill Bill, though. Oh, yeah. They, they shot her in the chest with rock salt. I'm sure that sucked. Oh, that <laughs> hurts so bad. Um, Anybody that's ever gotten salt in a paper cut would know. Oh, it's supposed to get shot in the chest. <laughs> Ow. Um, Suffolk. But yeah, so it's mostly good for that. Do you have anything else you really associate with besides <sighs> purification and protection? Um... That's really the, the big ones for me. I also, it's strange, like a lot of sand will come with salt, like mixed in with the grains. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I also associate it with being very good for sigil or, um, okay. you know, like, cause I, I use sand to draw my sigils and my runes and stuff and setting intentions. So, um, I also associate it, um, with being very good at, I don't want to call it imprinting, but setting intentions into an item, because you can set an item in the sand and then draw, draw your wardings, draw your sigils, draw your, mm -hmm. you know, your everything. Plus good for cleansing, too, isn't yes. it? Yes, it is. Do you have to be careful with cleansing anything in salt? I know you have to be careful with salt water. For some, especially stones, yes. but pure salt, will uh, that erode anything? Yes. Um, because there's actually a really popular thing that I've seen going around for a little bit, and it's like taking a giant like glass vase, filling it with salt, and then um, also with like other cleansing stones and using it as a cleansing dish for certain items. Um, one thing to, to be careful about with that is salt can erode some items. And also, there are certain stones that you should not put in a bowl of salt um, because it will fragment or it will eat away at them. Um, one of the big ones that comes to mind is selenite. Please do not put selenite in your dish of salt 
because it is so delicate and it splinters so easily that it will the splint splinters will fall off of it into the salt and those are a booger if they get in your skin and other mm-hmm. things. Yeah. Um, yeah, I knew for sure because you can't do any kind of water on selenite either. No. But I didn't think plain salt would do that, but that makes sense. Yes. Um, selenite is very delicate, and but it's very popular to, to be, because selenite's a big cleanser. Mm-hmm. So people are like, oh, selenite in a salt dish for, you know. For Extra boosting. For a purification um, dish would work wonders. Please don't do that. If you're going to do something, um, do citrine, do like regular quartz or... Do harder stones, basically. Do harder stones. Please don't put selenite in your salt dish just because splintering is not great. Yeah, not not super great. Um, and then in that same vein, we're going to talk a little bit about Himalayan salt because I happen to really enjoy Himalayan salt. That's actually the only salt I ate for several years. Like I don't have a lot of experience with Himalayan yeah. salt. Um, it doesn't really taste different, honestly. I think maybe like kind of like if you can taste very, very little, you know, subtle flavors because there is... Um, the reason Himalayan salt is pink is because it has metals in it. It's got, um, copper in it. It's got Mm -hmm. iron in it. Um, it's also got calcium, magnesium, and potassium in it. Oh. So there's, there's science reasons why it's pink. It's not just coming out of the ground like that. I like the fact that it has iron in it because iron is also super duper protective. Um, like I, I love like old iron. I, um, when I was young, I actually found like an old, um, horseshoe. That it oxidized. Mm-hmm. And that has been, like, the best, like, protection wand. Mm. And I, I, like, if I'm ever feeling, like, really, like, weighed down, like, something's clinging to me, hold that, like, because it's, it broke off some long time ago, and it's only, like, half of a horseshoe now. But it's super oxidized, but, like, holding on to that, it's, it's so purifying. But... The only, um, so like I said, I like Himalayan salt. It's good. It's good for, because it's pink, it's good for romance. Oh, yeah. I, um, oh, yeah. I would see that being very good for, um, cleansing matters of the heart. Mm-hmm. Or protecting or, romances yeah. or, you know. Or, um, cleansing issues with, um, like, barriers to self-love. Mm-hmm. So I, anything you would associate pink with yeah. would be good. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Disclaimer, warning, um, if you work with any spirits, deities, fae, other, that does not like any of those materials, especially the iron. Oh, yeah. They will be repelled by it, they will feel insulted, and they might not ever come back. <laughs> please, please don't offer any anything like Himalayan salt, if, since it has iron in it, please don't offer that to the fae. Especially. Since a, some fae... I think it's all fae. There are, there is some mythology, especially in, I want to say like German fairies, oh. of, um, there are specific types of fairies that, um, can work with metal. Okay. Metal or iron though? Cause. Iron. Okay. Cause I can see some, I can see some phase like it's some gold and stuff. You oh know? yeah. But no. Some more sparkly things. No. But there is some mythology here and there of specific fae, like a specific species of fae that, that work, can deal with iron. Yeah, you would have to do a lot of research on that one though, because yes. most fae it's just safer to just not work with iron. Especially because... if you're working with home fae or um, garden fae, I would say, you know, please don't offer them Himalayan salt since it has iron. Um, milk and honey will will normally or uh, cream if you're going very uh, old school. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, those those work very well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah, there there are things you can offer them that are you know simple, um, but yeah, just. A little warning on that Himalayan. Anything else should be good, and I don't know if there's deities that don't like iron. I just threw that in because I assume I there might be a deity somewhere that just maybe Probably. doesn't like it. Um, also, I generally wouldn't do salt offerings for any garden spirit just because salt, like Is that, salting the earth. Yeah. Like, that's how you destroy vegetation. I would not offer salt as... Yeah, so maybe like some... To any garden Maybe spirit. like a... Uh, Deities that deal with growth, greenery, like maybe something like um, Demeter or something might not like iron or iron-based things. I don't know. If I had to take a wild stab in the dark. But that's just my own, that's my own personal thing is, um, that, that's purely me, don't, you know. Yeah. If, if you have something that works, go with what works for you. I'm just saying on my personal end, 
um, any anything having to do with greenery, vegetation, plant life, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't do a salt offering. To and that makes sense to me. So, but again, opinions are our own. Yeah. Um, but yeah, again, if I had to take a stab in the dark, I would think more green, earth based deities would probably enjoy other types of offerings more than salt. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I love what my grandmother does. Like she is not really witchy at all, but she is. She's like up in the. She's up in the country. She's very old school in some of the things that she did does, but she does her own like composting bucket, mm. um, where she puts like some of her scraps and things. So um, and that would be an excellent offering. Yes, and that she used to spread it in her garden, her com her homemade compost, and I was like, man, if you really want to please your your garden people. Um, spread spread some mulch or do um, spread the love. <laughs> yeah, something like that. So I, I know this is a tangent. We're 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 getting back to it. The last little quick thing I forgot. It's in my notes though. That's why I have notes. Um, black salt. That is not something you're gonna have in your pantry. But it's a little quick kind of note. It's basically just sea salt again, but you're mixing it with activated charcoal. Ooh. And then. You can either oh. shake out the charcoal or leave it in, but you can shake it out and then it's just black salt left behind. Dude, warding and protection. Mm-hmm. That, is, that would be fantastic. It's giving it an extra... How did ex- I not know that existed? It's not common. It's used actually a lot in more voodoo voodoo stuff. Okay, I can see that. Um, But I've seen it used in other traditions, but I just mm-hmm. I was looking it up and there's actually a website to buy some stuff and it was more predominantly... Voodoo, voodoo stuff, so. Okay. That's where I was like, oh, I remember that was a thing. Um, so, but on top of being a good protection thing, charcoal absorbs. Mm-hmm. Like, when you get really sick, that's something that doctors will pump your stomach with because it'll basically expel anything yeah. from your body, especially like if you have alcohol poisoning or it'll something. It'll absorb it before it gets into your system. Pretty much. So, the thing with black with the black salt is once it absorbs an energy, you have to dispose it. It is not like a salt where you can just kind of sprinkle around and leave it. You would have to sweep it back up, or if you want to leave it in little dishes, so you can just take them and throw them out and wherever. You do have to get rid of the black salt eventually, because it's absorbing things, and you don't mm-hmm. want it to just release them back into your space. But that was pretty much all I had on that. And now we're getting into pepper. Um, black pepper is the most common pepper. It is... <sighs> anyway, um... Sorry about that. We had some technical difficulties, so we had to real quick reset it. Yeah, that was unpleasant. We thought we had lost all previous footage and... Whew. Um, quick it, note, the oregano helped. We, uh, Yes, yes. Kind of uh, just whiffed it and it just... It was very chill. I don't know. This, wasn't expecting there this there may have been some mild panicking involved yeah we, we'd already had some other filming issues today and we didn't want to have to refilm all of this one too <laughs> i swear it's it's not even mercury retrograde i don't it's think. supposed to be a good thing this right now right because it's I whatever think... just happened it's supposed to be really good in the universe actually oh well, i thought it was like a saturn yeah saturn or something but yeah what i, what I thought it was is. a saturn retrograde or a jupiter retrograde mm-hmm. i'll have to check that later Mm-hmm. I heard that one's here till November of this year or next year, and I heard like it's a good instead yeah. of like the Mercury one where it was like freaking out. Um, so we left off at pepper, <laughs> and it is. I'm just gonna throw it back up a little quick. Where did I put it? Oh, it's, the, it's on the table, Alex. Yeah. So most people have pepper shakers, but yeah. we're fancy. We've got the whole stuff. Um, I happen to like gr- grinding it fresh though. It just gives you a little more aromatic yes mm. but it's black um black is a really good for most instances a good color of protection mm-hmm. um and warding you know just good kind of protecting stuff and it's also a spice it is also like if you bite into especially like a fresh uh, pepper berry basically you won't cough it yeah it's gonna <laughs> It'll get back in your uh, back in the throat. And actually, there. I think the fact that um, the fact that it's because people used to sometimes when you cook the whole thing, it's almost like tear gas. Yeah, like pepper spray. I mean, I know this works a lot better with like 
chili, like no, chili peppers, yeah. but it almost kind of applies to black pepper as well. And I think that's kind of where it initially got its whole warding and protection. Because if you ever cooked some of those just by themselves in like some water or something, I'm sure it would have cleared a room. Oh yeah, I'm sure it probably would have done a little acid in too. Um, so yeah, it repels, protects, um, it can help in smothered gossip. So if you, um, there's a lot of like bags and spells and stuff for, um, stopping gossiping or, oh. you know, kind of eliminating that from your life. Stopping the drama, basically. Ooh, so I like that. Black pepper is something that's pretty good for those kind of things. Um, it's also, like other spices, good for giving people a kick in the butt. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's true for most spices, honestly, but pepper is just one of those things that a lot of people, if not all people have to some extent, because right. pepper is just really common. Or again, if you're witching on the cheap and you just don't have it on your own, go to like McDonald's or something and they have those little packets of salt and pepper and you don't need a lot. So a couple will do you, you know. I actually used to know somebody that carried those tiny little pepper and salt packets around in their purse. So at any time, they had like three or four of those little things. And I was like, looking back on it, that was a really good idea. Mm -hmm. I used to carry the little salt packet in my wallet. <clears throat> oh, well there. Yeah, because those were like, you know, especially the, I think it's Burger King? Or maybe not, one of them cracks open. Ooh. Remember? Um, oh, yeah. Well, I, I, I forget which one it is, but one of those restaurants, you crack it open. So that one is like a good... <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, so... It's it's probably not as effective as pepper spray, but if you really needed a getaway, you just <laughs> I'm sure yeah. throw that in someone's face would give them a good distraction at least. Mm -hmm. um, so pepper and salt, even though we didn't have a whole lot to say about them, are still just really big staples. Yes. Um, the only other thing about pepper, kind of like salt, there are other peppercorns. I did read that the pink one is not actually technically a pepper. It's just in the same kind of plant family. Oh. But they're still called peppercorns. So if you go, like, we have central markets nearby. And you can buy, like, um... Do they actually look like the black peppercorns, but they're pink? A little bit, but instead of, like, when you look at them, you see how they're kind of, like, wrinkly and, like, really tight? Yeah. Pink peppercorns have, like, a little seed in the middle. And then, like, their outside skin is very thin and crispy. Oh. So when you go to smush them, it kind of like falls apart, kind of like an eggshell almost. It just goes, it just cracks off. Oh, So okay. you're using more like the skin of the berry versus the insides, because the inside's a seed. Right, and I assume that the pink one kind of does the same thing as the black pepper, but it has more like healing and love and stuff. Mm -hmm. So there's more color association with the other types of peppercorn, and there's... Pink, yellow, green, and white, which I didn't even know about the yellow, green, and whites. I, I knew about white pepper. I think I might have seen white pepper. But I've pepper only seen it ground. Mm hmm. And I think I've seen it in a bottle like this, actually, where like there was white and black ones in a bottle. Which actually, I think I have some white. I have some white um, pepper in my in my in my spice cabinet. Oh, well, there you go. It was gifted to me by a chef. Oh. Oh yeah. Yeah, my chef friend. Lucky you. But otherwise. I probably wouldn't have it. Not something very common. So we're but, just kind of like the salt. Black is more common, but if you do happen to run around and you see, because I've heard pink peppercorn tastes delicious. Like oh, I've really? heard it gives a whole different palate taste to stuff, and I'm mm. like, mm, sounds pretty good. But yeah, pink, so healing, love, romance, passion. Again, color association can be more personal than this, but this is just kind of the the, the, the more commonly used ones. Yellow, um, I was reading that it's really good for healing stuff, but yellow could also be communication. Right. Um, it's good, I I know, for, like, studying, study habits. Yellow, yes. color yellow is good for that. That's what I use when I'm studying. So, it could be used for other things, but healing is kind of one of the big ones for that. Green, again, luck, prosperity, anything kind of that you associate with green would be, yeah, money. Especially in the States, because our money is green, but a lot of other countries yeah. have way cooler looking money than we do. Yeah. Um, like waterproof and like scratch and stuff. Yeah, like what Canada, I think, has like holographic money. And we just get money that goes soggy in the wash. Yeah, unless it sticks together because it's got like fibers in it. Woo. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last one is what we mentioned, white, which... I was reading that it's good for achieving goals, but the white should also probably be good for a lot of other things. Like I would think so. 
like I'm sure if you mixed it with the black, it'd probably be good for protection. Right. And maybe sanctifying stuff. I would think so. Um, kind of like salt, salt and pepper together would kind of do the same thing, but maybe just white and black peppers would do the same thing as well. Um, but yeah, any other... Um, real quick, I do want to touch on just one or two other ones. Um, one of the, the big ones that I ended up using real, like, when I was new into this was, um, ch actual chili flakes. Mm -hmm. I, I use it a lot, um, when I need to, like, add some heat or add some, um, not just punch to it, but, like, if something needs to happen very quickly, like, I need some expediency to what I'm working on, I will add chili Peppers. I also have used it for protection, for having someone, you know, get the heck out of Dodge. Um, um, but that's one that's really common in a lot of people's pantry. Mm-hmm. Um, like we mentioned in another video, like, if you ever order pizza or you go yes. to, um, like, I know Costco does it because, again, pizza. But there's some places where they have, like, chili packs next to the cheese packs. and A lot know. of places that do, like, pizza delivery, you can get, like, the, the cheese and the pepper packets. Um, which the pepper packets are really useful for stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I've used them a lot in like spell bottles and, and things like that. I wouldn't recommend it in incense because, you know, pepper spray, but... Yeah, no, I wouldn't either. Um, two notes on that though. If you're steeping it in oil, that's definitely going to be an irritant. Yes, please don't put it on your skin. Um, I mean, if you're trying to get rid of somebody, maybe put it on their skin. No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> don't oh, that, that just reminds me of like the old high school pranks of someone putting like icy hot and guys Ooh. jock straps like that's just what it reminds me of and oh that doesn't Ouch. sound pleasant that's um it. yeah so i'm pretty sure like spices are used in oils maybe not topical use oils yeah. but like i think there's something called like hot foot oil yes things kind of to make things go away i'm sure some of those have some yes. kind of chili element to them two if you have pets um don't let them get into that stuff. Yes. Obviously, because that's going to totally wreck their noses. <laughs> right. Um, a lot of herbs just be, use your common sense. Um, if you have pets or small right. children things. <laughs> um, I think one of the last ones I would talk about is rosemary. Just because I've actually used rosemary quite a bit since I started. Um, because it, it's, it's multi-use. It's multi it works very well for... Prosperity, it works very well for luck and love. Um, also, rosemary is a very good one for cleansing. Um, not just in, like, the pepper sense, but also, like, it can be used as an incense to cleanse. So if you can't get sage, you can't get palo santo, or, you know, you're not wanting to, to use those because by everyone now using them, it's starting to deplete. Mm-hmm. Um, then using rosemary is a good option to, to, to burn for smudging purposes. Yeah. Well, not smudging, but cleansing purposes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. And I didn't have a lot of notes on that one, so I had to look up some stuff <laughs> on my phone. <laughs> um, I was, I was reading that it's good for accelerating learning and studying, actually. Oh, so I, didn't know I guess that. maybe the smell of it kind of triggers. Now, fun note, um, somebody that was in my part of my witchy life before, was nervous because we were shopping for shampoo Good. and they had um, some more natural shampoos that had a lot of rosemary in them oh. and it made him nervous. What's that? And I was like, dude, why are you so nervous? And he goes, rosemary can be a very jealous herb. So if you go to use it and it doesn't like you or you don't respect its use, it can uh, turn on you apparently. And I was like, oh, oh, I didn't know that. He was like, dude, I won't even use that in a shampoo. I ain't taking that risk. And I was like, oh, wow. I have never heard that before. That's yeah, I hadn't either. And I was like, oh. like That's very interesting. Was that Eric again? Mm-mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, I've never gone shopping. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know was, what y'all do. It was the wheel guy. Oh, okay. I gotcha. So, Sorry, we keep mentioning Eric a lot. He's someone that has um, been a big part of this one since she got more into the witchy community. Um, he he, does, he follows Santa, Santa Marte, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. He does. Okay. So, mm. He's very knowledgeable, so we reference him sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he's, he's just a really cool person. Yeah. Um... Hopefully, maybe in the future, we can get him on to talk to y'all. I think that would be very 
enlightening for all of us. Because mm-hmm. I, I think I would like to learn a little bit more just to just to educate myself. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, I have used rosemary very sparingly, but I've I have used it um, in trying to make a like a prosperity incense. I have used it when I was coming when I was looking into mm-hmm. a um, a self love blend for myself. Um, and I have also very sparingly used it as a impromptu um, energy cleanse. Oh, for yeah, my, for my uh, my main altar area. Mm. And then the last thing I was reading that I thought was kind of interesting, going with your energy cleanse, was they would in the, there's a so when you go to burn it, you can actually try you can actually dispel if someone's been sick in your house for a while, like if you've had like a cold or something. It, it apparently helps cleanse your air. Oh. So that kind of makes sense. Cleansing, burning something. Um, again, not health advice. But it's good for... It's, I'm sure it smells pretty decent, too, when you're burning it. Yes. So it's probably something like... It's, it is so. good to kind of freshen up your space after you have been sick, too. That's just... You know, wash your sheets, air out your stuff, you know, and then just kind of add a little spice to the room. Yeah. Which I do a lot of different layers when I'm cleansing or cleaning an area. Like, I do sound cleansing. I do uh, air cleansing. I, you know, I do, like, a wash. Like, I do a whole bunch of different things. Mm-hmm. But burning rosemary actually worked very well. And at the time, I didn't have a lot of other... I was in a short amount of time, and I needed to get something done. It was really just kind of one of those things that I had to get it done very quickly. And honestly, for just being a rosemary burn, it actually worked surprisingly well. Like, I, it felt better afterwards hmm. so well, yeah. that was just two that i really wanted to just add in because one they were common in my pantry and they were very useful i hoped to, that they would be useful for y'all as well mm-hmm. and then going back with all this we're gonna have other videos for edible herbs of course like other things there was a lot more in my pantry i just didn't want to make this like a three hour video it's yeah. already much longer than i expected it to be um uh, but, so there's there's going to be other things we mentioned, and then I've gone and looked through other friends' pantries, and they, they had things I didn't even have, so I was like, you know, see kind of what other people have, check it out. And then eventually we will start getting into, like, other types of plants, maybe that are mm-hmm. just witchy and not for cooking. Right. But this is going more with our stuff that we've already talked about, being on the cheap, because herbs tend to be cheaper, because yeah. you're buying them at your grocery store, you're buying them at Walmart, wherever... And then it's cheaping on the sly, or cheaping, witching on the sly because no one's going to suspect you cooking is your practice. All right. So that about wraps it up, finally. <laughs> Thanks for sitting with us. And yeah. hopefully you'll, you'll kind of stick along with us. On the journey. On the journey. All right. Bye, y'all. Toodaloo.